Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flayer. Hope you're all doing very well today, and I am here with another theory video for you. This one made at viewer request and in response to a Nikikshu MTG video that I will link below. And Nikikshu basically has advocated that we unban the card Splinter Twin in the modern format. Now, I am going to make a counter argument here. I am going to address the major points that Nikikshu raises, and I'm going to say why I don't think they hold up to scrutiny, and then I'm going to add my own additional reasons on top of that as to why I think Splinter Twin should remain on the ban list. So the one thing that I will say right out of the gates is that if you had asked me in 2018, I would have said, actually, yes, I think Splinter Twin should be unbanned or could reasonably be unbanned with the idea that we wait and see and fair warning, you know, it could get banned if it's too oppressive and all that stuff. But then 2019 happened, and I really, truly believe that 2019 throws a wrench into the entire equation. So before I get into the theory, I do have to say that I have a great deal of respect for Nikikshu. I think he's a great content creator, and I actually modeled my own channel to a significant degree after his, you know. We're both YouTubers, we're not another Twitch streamer, we're making more YouTube-focused in YouTube-friendly content. We are also focusing mainly on one archetype. In his case, it is Merfolk. In my case, of course, it is Green, Black, X, Midrange, and Modern. And I don't know if Nikachu will remember this, but way back in the day when my channel was new, you know, close to a year and a half ago now, I think, I reached out to him in one of his comment sections and said, hey, you know, this is my goal. This is what I'm trying to do. It's kind of similar to what you're doing. Do you mind if I model myself off of you using the Patreon tier system that you've developed specifically? And he said, hey, man, no problem. Go for it. Use whatever you want to use and all the best. So I got to say, I got to give Nikachu full props for that. I do think he's a great content creator in his own right, but, but I think he might be wrong here. So let's get right into it. Should Splinter Twin be unbanned? I say no, and here is why. So it's important to understand the baseline premise that Nikachu's operating from, and to be fair, I agree completely with this premise, and I think most of you will as well. The premise here is that Splinter Twin is a, co is a combo deck that can police the format because it's powerful, it has a reliable, quick win condition, uh, which you usually need to be at the very top tables in modern, and it interacts. You see cards like Remand are kind of iconically twin or iconically is it interaction, and it can be interacted with. You know, if you can kill the Pestermite or the Deceiver Exarch, if you can leverage some permission on the stack, if you can disrupt uh, their plans with hand disruption or with attrition um, that depletes resources like Liliana of the Veil. All of these effects do you know, get you somewhere at least nominally against Splinter Twin. So to that end, a lot of people think Splinter Twin is kind of the ideal police deck for the format because it's powerful, it's got a reliable quick win condition, it interacts, and it can be interacted with. Now, Nikachu seems to operate from that framework, and again, I completely agree. But Nikachu then takes that framework and that idealization of Twin as a police deck to the next level and... What he makes, uh, the case he makes there is where I start parting ways. So in addition to what I just laid out, Nikikshu also says it's a good thing, basically, that Splinter Twin could really easily leverage Blood Moon, presumably even main deck, although I don't know if he said that specifically. And he says this because Big Mana is taking over Modern. It is running roughshod over the Modern format. And hey, no arguments from me there. We've got the Primeval Titan decks totally out of control, dominating the top tables. You've got no arguments here. But let's remember this. The, na the notion of discussing bans and unbans, specifically when it comes to a card like Splinter Twin that did have its heyday in Modern and was subsequently banned and has been on the ban list for a very, very long time now, the discussion is by definition utopian. What I mean to say by this is that the discussion... Like, it, it, it is an aspirational standard that we are aiming for. We don't want to say, well... If Splinter Twin was unbanned, then the best deck in the format could main deck Blood Moons, and hopefully that would keep Big Mana at bay. If we are aiming for an ideal construction of the modern format and an ideal curation of the ban list to lead to the type of play that most modern players want to see, I don't think that the overpowered Big Mana decks 
crushing everything but being kept in check by the Blood Moon main decking combo deck is really, is that really the best we can do in modern? I don't think so. So to me, the notion that Splinter Twin is especially desirable as a police force due to the fact that they can play Blood Moon at almost no deck building cost, to me, I don't really see that. I don't really see that as anything remotely, frankly, like what we want to aim for, for an ideal modern format. The other primary argument that Nikachu makes is that uh, there have been more answers print, uh, printed that can disrupt the Splinter Twin combo since it last reigned supreme in modern, and there's no question again that he is right about this, but I would question the extent to which these answers are actually effective. So these two cards here he specifically names in his video, Mystical Dispute and Fatal Push. So let's talk about Dispute first. Yeah, I mean, Dispute is live against a twin deck, but you know where else it's live? It is live in a twin deck. It's in fact arguably better in a Splinter Twin deck as a sideboard card against blue decks than it even is against Twin, because Twin is significantly red. They can do a lot of other red things, while you're the one, you're not the combo deck. You know, if you're playing Mystical Dispute, you're maybe on a control deck or something like this. You're probably not the combo deck. You're probably the one who needs to respect their potentiality more than the other way around. So if anything, Mystical Dispute, it's very possible that it helps Twin more than it harms them. He also did mention Fatal Push, and look, Fatal Push, yes, it can kill the Pestermite. It can kill the Exarch, and the latter of which did not die to Lightning Bolt, so that is kind of a big deal. But at the same time, any experienced BGX midrange player will tell you that you certainly do not always have Revolt when you need it with Fatal Push. That is not even in question. It is very, very common for you to have a very tough decision between do you develop your mana normally or do you leave this fetch land cracked ad infinitum in case you need a revolt. Now, if you're not if you're not overly flush with lands, that's a really big issue. It becomes even more of an issue when you recognize the fact that Twin naturally tempos you out. The blue-red color pairing is already kind of a tempo-oriented color pairing, and the combo pieces themselves, like Pestermite, those are tempo cards. And again, if you look at the adaptation that we'd expect, you know, of, of the deck picking up cards like Remand, all of this put together means that you are already at very high risk of getting tempoed out as a mid-range player. So realistically, when you're against a tempo deck, you can't afford to just leave a fetch land unused forever just in case they happen to go for the combo and not also not have permission for your fatal push. Like, eventually, you're just going to start executing your plan and make them have it, and then your fatal push cannot save you any longer. Finally, there's Plague Engineer. I don't remember him mentioning this. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But certainly other people mention it when discussions of Twin come up. And yes, Plague Engineer does kill Pestermite and also stops Pestermite from being part of the combo and also uh, cripples Deceiver Exarch in that same way without outright killing it. And, you know, Plague Engineer is obviously a great card all around. You don't have to convince me of that. I think this is one of the best cards in the BGX archetype, frankly. But... But we are against, again, remember, a URX control shell. Can you think of much worse in terms of its likelihood of resolving and sticking than a 3-mana sorcery speed 2-2 against a deck playing lightning bolts and remands and all kinds of other removal and permission? Um, even cards that may or may not see play, like super flex you, uh, Swiss knife cards like Is It Charm can still really put an end to the Plague Man's dreams of breaking up the combo. So as far as, you know, real hosers for the twin combo go, I don't really think these cards apply necessarily. Now, they're not nothing, but my argument is, is here that Twin actually got tools that are way more powerful on its own side relative to the cards that may or may not be effective at answering it. Now let's take a look at some of those. So let's give you the most egregious one first, my friends, and that would be the much maligned, at least by me, Veil vale of Summer. So Veil vale of Summer, this card is highly controversial. I, I am a vocal critic of it. I do not understand the design. I don't understand why in an era where the answers are already struggling to keep up with the assembly line production of overpowered and broken threats and combo enablers, we are printing cards like Veil vale of Summer, which specifically hose interaction in a way that is just 
really hard to come back from when you are on a fair interactive mid-range or control deck trying to break up some of this linearity in modern. So Veil of Summer is a very, very easy thing I can see twin pilots reaching for. They're going to build a team or twin deck. They're going to play four copies of Veil of Summer in the sideboard, maybe even going so far as to main deck some of them if the meta allows for it or encourages it. And that in and of itself to me, this, I could stop and end the video here. I think as long as Veil of Summer is legal and modern, Splinter Twin should not be legal. There you go. I really, truly believe that this combo is that dangerous. And if you don't think it's realistic that Team or Twin with Veil would see play, well, I invite you to look at some recent Gift Storm lists, and uh, that should tell you exactly what you need to know, because the Storm decks, of course, are traditionally just blue-red, but a lot of Storm players themselves are reaching for Veil of Summer to protect their combo, and there is no question in my mind that Splinter Twin would do the same thing. If you're already splashing for green, it, of course, opens up all kinds of other options that I don't have the time or the expertise to cover it here because I'm not a twin player, but the one thing that immediately comes to mind is Bounding Crisis. This is another t potential twin combo piece, and it happens to be three power, um, which could be very, very useful for the twin decks. I don't know if they would ever opt for this over Pestermite or Deceiver. I'm not sure, but it is another thing that could be brought to bear. But really, the big danger of Teamer Twin, I can't say it enough, Veil of Summer. Veil of Summer is going to be unbeatable. Like, if the game is otherwise even, Veil of Summer just will ensure that Splinter Twin forces their combo through. And given its presence, again, I think we cannot unban Splinter Twin while Veil of Summer is legal and modern. But that's not all, my friends. Oh no, oh no, that's not all. You also have to remember the uh, one of the other big bombs of 2019, one of the other most controversial design choices of 2019 is... Teferi Time Raveler, who basically makes any form of a control mirror into a joke if he resolves, uh, becomes a race to resolve your own Teferi first. Now, that's bad enough when it's control against control, but of course, when you have a combo deck that can play a really respectable control game and can also dip into white for Teferi Time Raveler, well, Teferi is very, very fine along the tempo or control uh, game plan, whether it be the plan B or just stalling until they can combo off. Yeah, Teferi, bounce your creature, bounce your artifact, bounce your enchantment, whatever, draw a card. Obviously, he's really, really good at that, but more importantly for our purposes, you resolve him, and then Splinter Twin cannot be countered. It's basically shutting off all permission, all traditional forms of permission, no longer apply as long as Teferi's around. So that's just another way alongside Veil of Summer that we have punished traditional interaction in the printings of 2019, and therefore we need to be extra vigilant about what combos we allow through the cracks. So Teferi alone is another huge red flag, a huge question mark as to whether we should be even considering Splinter Twin while he's legal. Now, I do think Veil of Summer might be on the ban watch list, but I'm pretty sure Teferi's not, and until anything radically changes, I don't expect that he's even remotely likely to be banned. So do you really want to have all of the blue control players and any form of blue permission really just get totally routed around for free by a Jeskai twin deck that already can play, again, a very good tempo and value plan and already just can combo off, you know, you got to remember that there's already a fail rate if you don't have the right interaction to begin with. So the fact that we're adding extra layers of value positive ways to hose opposing interaction to the twin deck, uh-uh, I really don't think it's a good idea. Now, since we're in Jeskai colors, it would be remiss of me not to mention that Stoneforge Mystic is another thing that is legal. Now, that wasn't when Twin reigned supreme, and Stoneforge Mystic may or may not be an easy slot into the Splinter Twin decks, but look, Pestermite seems like it carries a sword really, really well as a nice plan B, and we do know that these Twin decks are definitely interested in some kind of a plan B, whether it be just more value out of the side, or 
um, a transformational plan out of the side, or even them just baking a Stoneforge Mystic plan into the pie. I Again, I don't know. There's no way for any of us to really know. I think it's at least reasonable to consider that this is another potential big problem for Splinter Twin. And finally, if you are already having these incentives to go white, well, it's white. You can pick your hate card of choice. It's going to exist in white. So you've got Splinter Twin able to pack their sideboard full of whatever the hate cards du jour are so they can thrive in any given meta if they're already, again, wanting to play the color white. So another big red flag, or maybe white flag as the case may be, for me. And finally, guys, we've got to remember that, you know, let's say that the three color splash, I think it's super realistic, but for, let's say for whatever reason, it's not as realistic as I think it is. Well, and it may be especially if we want to play that Blood Moon we mentioned at the beginning of the video. Well, let's look at just the straight up Is It Twin, the blue red Splinter Twin deck. Honestly, these colors got some upgrades too. We already mentioned Mystical Dispute, how I think it might actually help Twin overall more than hurt it. Uh, also, remember Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yes, he was, he's been put on the back burner a little bit after. Oko and company came out in 2019 and kind of turned modern on its head, right? But Jace is still a big, big upgrade for blue-red decks, even if he's just a really nice one of, even if he's just some more value out of the side, whatever. It's still Jace the Mind Sculptor. It's still another tool that Twin now has at its disposal. And then you got to think of other cards like Magmatic Sinkhole that they might not look flashy, they might not look that impressive, but hey, they did not exist before. And this is going to allow Twin to, for instance, cleanly answer a 4-5 Tarmogoy for a Gurmag Angler or things like this, while trading one for one, not having to two for one themselves, not having to struggle to deal with these threats if they resolved. It's just that the point here is that Twin, I think, it's clear, has way more tools helping it than there are answers to it. Having uh, taken the last couple years holistically, I think it's really hard to argue against that. But as always, my friends, you can let me know. All right, my friends, so just to sum up my case against Splinter Twin and, and against Nikachu's argument for it, number one, I don't think we should be aiming for a Blood Moon packing combo deck as the best ideal policeman for modern. Number two, I do not think the answers to Twin are all that scary from the Twin player's perspective that were printed since Twin became illegal and modern. And number three, I think cards especially like Veil of Summer and Teferi Time Raveler, but also other supplementary tools ranging from potentially Stoneforge Mystic to Jace the Mind Sculptor to Mystical Dispute, these are all way more tools and way more powerful tools than Twin ever had access to back when it was banned for being too good. So there you go, guys. That's my case against Twin, but I would love to hear from you. So please do leave your commentary below. I'll try to read and reply to every comment as I always do. Um, please do, if you enjoy this content, like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Um, we've got some really good content coming up for you. In order, we have Clothis Jund donation league coming up next. We have another theory video focused on Mono Red Prowess deck building, followed by another Mono Red Prowess league coming up next. And after that, we've got two more donation leagues. One is called Force of Rock, I'll let you speculate as to what that might be. And finally, Abs and Stoneblade, which we have not played in forever. So thank you, as always, for watching. Thank you even more to the Patreon supporters. And you guys let me know. Splinter Twin, yay or nay. Look forward to hearing from you, and I will talk to you soon. Hope everybody out there has a wonderful day.